Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my favourite books of quarter one 2023. So these are my top 10 favourite books of January to March 2023. Uh, we're going in reverse order. Let's go ahead and get started. So, Dane reads. In at number 10 we have Twas the Fright Before Christmas in Deathlyhem by Michael J. Evans and Harrison Graves. Uh, I should point out that my story, Black Solstice, was in this, um, as were a bunch of other holiday-themed horror stories, uh, all in aid of a charity as well, so it's an anthology, lots of fun. Um, yes, check it out. Um, I may be a little bit biased, I mean, I don't know, it's a good anthology. I'm, I would still rate it up here in the top ten without my story, you know? At number nine we have Graham McRae Burnett, The Accident on the A35, so this is Kind of literary detective fiction, I suppose you would call it. Uh, he also wrote The Disappearance of Adele Badeau and uh, His Bloody Project. It's rapidly becoming one of my, my favourite contemporary writers. Um, it has, again, like these literary elements and then also this kind of mystery vibes. Not quite a cosy mystery, but certainly mystery vibes. At number eight, we have The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I've got to be honest, I don't particularly remember this one by this point, but I do remember that I enjoyed it. Uh, kind of thriller, again, with hints of like crime and, and stuff in it, but mostly I would call it a thriller. Ruth Ware, you know what you're getting, really. At number seven, we have I Follow You by Peter James. So this is a more recent release by Peter James. I mostly read him because of his Roy Grace, uh, like... Guess, again, crime series, uh, police procedural th uh, series. This is more of a standalone thriller, and it basically follows this nutcase who stalks a woman because she has like location sharing available on her uh, running app, a bit like Strava or whatever. And yes, very good nail biting stuff. At number six, we have Brian Herbert, Kevin J. Anderson, Raoul Allen, and Patricia Martin. June, the graphic novel, book one. And at number five, we have the same set of authors with June, the graphic novel, book two. Um, it's the graphic novel based on, on June, very good stuff, and uh, would recommend it if, uh, if you get a chance to read it. It's a really accessible way of reading the June But And number four, we have The Testaments by Margaret Atwood, so this is the sequel to The Handmaid's Tale. Just as gripping as the, uh, as the original. Uh, they can both be read as standalones, but I mean, I would read them one after the other if you get the chance, because you will get a little, bit, a little bit more out of it. Follows a different set of characters, but we're still kind of seeing what's going on in Gilead. Lots of feminism to it. Um, just really, really sort of powerful reading. And number three, we have One Summer, America 1927 by Bill Bryson. So this is non-fiction all about that one particular summer in 1927. Uh, Prohibition is in full effect. Babe Ruth and um, Lou Gehrig are like slugging it out for the, the record of the most home runs in a season. And um, Charles Lindbergh is making his famous flight from New York to Paris. All of this crazy stuff happening, it kind of covers all of that. Um, there's like flooding. It's a really fascinating look at that particular period of American history and I think it holds up really well reading it now, like about 100 years afterwards. Um, although it is fairly recently that it was written to be honest, but it's amazing how much happened in that one year. And number two, we have Bay's End by Edward Lawn. So this is a thriller slash horror novel. Very kind of coming of agey, very inspired by Stephen King. It reminded me of um, something like uh, The Body or something like that. Uh, I picked this up because my other half really enjoys Edward Lawn as well. And I think we both thought it was his best. I certainly think it's the best of all of his books that I've read so far. And I'm looking forward to reading some more Edward Lawn. And finally we have Smut by Alan Bennett. So this is two unseemly short stories and basically it's just Alan Bennett but writing about sex and stuff. Like one of them is about this woman who um, she rents out a spare room and basically her like the two students or whatever that rent it from her can't afford to pay rent so they allow her to watch them having sex instead. Um, very dirty but also very funny. Good stuff. A lot of these have uh, full reviews on my channel as well, so I will link below to any of those that, that are out there. But yes, those are my top 10 books of quarter one. Uh, I will be back doing my top 10 books of quarter two, three, four, and then at the end of the year, I do my top 40 books of the year, so keep your eyes peeled for that. In the meantime, thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.